My lolly Terinda, my Zayo Stewart. Mr. Speaker, we asked for the communication with regards to the minority side on the leadership changes. I'm glad you have read what you have read. But first and foremost, that tribunal order has not been served upon myself. It has not been served upon uh, 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 my brother Olekina. And it has not been served on any side of the, of the, of the minority. That is point number one. Number two, Mr. Speaker, you may ignore the standing orders, but you cannot ignore precedents. And I want to lay down the precedents in a very formal way. There was Murkomen, who is now the Minister of Roads using the same provision he was removed and in his place Samuel Pogisio was to take over the leadership and it was being done by the majority side you can see that even Kihika Kimani who was a whip and Kihika Kimani was the first whip that we had but Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Kika Kimani, under the same Honourable provision, senators, Honourable senators, under the same the, provision, the minority room behind under you, the absolute same absolute provision, Kika Kimani, and Kika Kimani was Susan Kika Kimani was removed from being a whip, and in her place, Kangata took over. The same provision was used to remove Kangata and be put to a Matangi. And that was being done by the majority side. None of us committed, commented on this side because that was a party issue. Mr. Speaker, we find it strange that the same house together with all these precedents, precedents that were used have not been used now. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I have not seen the order myself, but I can tell you one thing. I, I want to ad address you on this issue. That the dispute here is between Senator Fatuma Dulo and her party. It is not between Fatuma Dulo and the house. That is point number one. And I want you to hear me properly. Mr. Speaker, while I agree that the PPDP is the right avenue to go, but the PPDP has absolutely no power to serve and stop the proceedings or to stop the procedures of parliament. That jurisdiction to serve parliament, I have not seen it. This is the first time that we are accepting this kind of uh, 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 an, an order in this house. What we want as the minority is that the communication that we gave you last week, which you've stayed with that communication for much too long. I've never seen communications coming to the house and staying that long. But this particular one has stayed for so long. You are now denying the minority an opportunity to have their leaders. Finally, Looking at that order itself, yeah, it has 
all the parties as she wanted to have them. But it has not included the deputy whip. So if you are to if you are to say that that order is correct then the position of the deputy whip is not mentioned anywhere in that order go ahead and communicate that order of the deputy minority whip is not covered mr speaker Mr. Speaker, we know there are three arms, three arms of government, the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. These are arms of the government. And there's what you call separation of powers. Mr. Speaker, they speak about the executive, the judiciary, and, uh, and the legislature. PDP is, doesn't fall anywhere close to the government. It's a tribunal and it cannot issue an order against parliament. Mr. Speaker, your hands are tied. As it stands right now, as it stands right now, Mr. Speaker, your hands are tied. We go by precedence in the Senate and in Parliament. Your brother, Thoma, who is now the Attorney General, Muturi, clearly stated when he was served with an order, and that order was coming from the judiciary, not a tribunal. And he said he will not be, if he will not implement that one, even though it was coming from the judiciary. And he said, Parliament have what you call, uh, the government has what you call separation of powers. That is one of, the, and finally, that is one of the issues. And finally, And finally, Mr. Speaker, you have not made your communication. You have gone ahead to communicate something else. You have gone ahead to pronounce yourself on the court order and not the communication that came to you before. Our communication came to you before. And there's this point of a delaying, uh, I don't know what I can call it, but you have delayed that communication you have allowed now to read to the House something that has come from PDP. So which communication should you have communicated first? Should you have communicated the communication that came from the, from the, from the uh, minority side? Or should you go ahead and now communicate on something that does not even affect you as a senator, uh, as a speaker of the Senate? That is one of the issues I want, and I want, I want, I want, I want you now to address the issue of uh, the deputy whip, uh, Edwin Sifuna, who is not party to this, all this. Confirm him as my deputy so that this side does not stay without leadership. Thank you. Uh, I'm following a list here, Kendri. You, you have already placed your account. So just have your cool wait, I'll give you that opportunity. Uh, Majority Rinda, Senator Chiriyo Talun. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have gone full circle. This is a very interesting debate. And uh, if I was to be honest, and I want to be as candid as I can be, I'm a bit confused on this topic. I have defended both sides of this debate. I have been on the side of parliament cannot be injuncted. And I used to shout so loudly, seated uh, where Senator Kinyua is, for many years. Because that's a vogue word. That's the thing that I heard when I first came to this house. 
being said, I think it must have been one of the impeachments. I think Deputy Governor Kiala or something. And we said Parliament cannot be injuncted. So we enjoyed for many times, every time there were court orders that were brought before the speakers, and we took a very firm position. Until one bright sunny morning, when President Uru decided to remove our colleagues, Senator Susan Kihika and Senator Onesmas Kipchumba Morkomen. We rushed to court, secured the orders, brought them before the speaker. Then we were quickly reminded, Parliament cannot be injuncted. So here we are, a practice that we had established so strongly that we used to be defenders of, despite having a valid court order presented to Speaker Lusaka. In minutes, he received a phone call. I have never seen my good friend, the Speaker, shake as he did on that morning. Quickly dashed to the House and communicated the changes. That gave me a different view to this conversation about the House cannot... Why don't, you keep, why don't you keep your calm, my good friend, so that we don't... We don't Senators, rather... I will request you to restrain uh, close yeah, yeah. purposes. If, 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 in fact, I intend to be very brief, Mr. Speaker. I and I'm happy, actually, today I want us to debate, like honorable senators, yeah, yeah. hammer your points properly and sit down. Thank Another you, senator will That's come what I intend to do. And take over. I'm sure he will, he will, he will have his opportunity to say his... Uh, uh, what he thinks about this particular topic. <laughs> if you can, if you can, if you can restrain Senator Sifula, Mr. Speaker, because you know he's he stands straight. Majority next to me. in the proceed and conclude. <laughs> ah, yeah. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, so today we are here. Uh, there is a court order, but there is something different because I've taken time to uh, look at the court order. Unlike in all the previous court orders that were being addressed to the Senate. This one specifically mentions you as a speaker. And that leaves me in a very interesting place. It's not in my place to advise you. It is you to make your decision because you're the speaker. But I'm not sure whether you want to proceed and defy a court order that is directly mentioning you as a speaker and not the institution of, of the Senate as has been previously. Because the order that you are carrying then was to the Senate, but not directly to the speaker. And that's a leeway. That's a leeway that Speaker then used and said, in any case, it's not me as in person that I have been mentioned. Finally, Mr. Speaker, because I know my colleagues uh, want us to debate uh, this matter and uh, are saying, please don't involve yourselves. But I agree with the leader of minority that there is precedence. Hardly two months ago, Mr. Speaker, National Assembly was vetting permanent secretaries, or they call principal secretaries nowadays. LSK moved to court on certain issues that they found to be wanting. What did your good brother in the National Assembly do? He lived up to the spirit of the Constitution, as was his interpretation, and waited. I think the National Assembly was injected for about a whole one month. In fact, the government stayed for close to two months without principal secretaries because of a court order. The process was still ongoing. But the speaker said, because one, I am a law-respecting Kenyan. Two, I swore by the Constitution. Three, as somebody who campaigned and actively promised Kenyans, because there is a history to this. We've come from a part of a history in our country during very difficult times when court orders were being ignored. And it was one of our campaign promise, at least for those of us on this side, that we shall always respect court orders. So, Mr. Speaker, you're being invited to make or to trade on very dangerous ground, which is defy a court order that's directly addressed to you. I leave it to your wisdom, Mr. Speaker, but at least on this particular matter, I want to urge you to take precedence from what your senior brother, the Speaker of the National Assembly, did when he was presented with a court order against the vetting of principal secretaries, he waited until that uh, decision was vacated by the courts and the exercise was concluded. In any case, I have seen, Mr. Speaker, that that order is only for, I think, three or four days only. How long is that before 
many of the points that uh, my good friend, the leader of minority, is arguing here, some of them can be made before that court because they have that opportunity to go and tell the court all those very nice things that he's saying. Because indeed, he is right and I agree with him. You are not a party to this dispute. This is a divorce proceeding in the Azimio coalition. You are neither one of the dowry negotiators who featured during the time that they were getting together, neither should you feature in their divorce. But unfortunately, your hands are tied, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, make your decision, but be wise on how you go about it, Mr. Speaker. Senator Mogeni, Eric, Okongo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, Mr. Speaker, I was trying to raise on a point of order. Because, the, uh, the Honorable Senator also, the majority leader was on yeah, a point because, of order. Uh, All these are prosecuting point of orders. Yeah, because, Mr. Speaker, the, the point I wanted to raise is that as a House, we are making reference to a court order, which uh, on this side we have not had sight of. But it seems the majority side have a court order. They even know how it's worded. But uh, I wanted to request the speaker that, you know, so that there is a fairness in the debate of this matter. If the, order, the court order was applied to the majority side, fairness demands, Mr. Speaker, that we should also be, uh, we have been given a copy. Uh, Senator, Senator, Senator Kaluwale, Senator Kaluwale, the issue I'm raising it touches on both sides. We need to see a court order because, let me tell you, you know, we have all lived in this country. There are some grounds which are so dangerous to take this country to. For example, Speaker, you know you may be thinking that uh, that ruling you are reading today is toward the minority side. But me, I'm looking at the big picture. We have sat here, Mr. Speaker, as senators, performing a critical duty of impeaching governors. And we have been served with court orders, Senator Galwani, before. And speakers who have sat on your seat have ruled consistent with the speaker that if we open it up, and you record this day, if you open it up to Kenyans to start serving your office with court order, which you receive and you come and make communication, Mr. Speaker, that is the day we will start killing this house. That is the day we will start killing this house. Mr. Speaker, your office does not serve the interest of just one day. Your office should serve posterity. Posterity. Mr. Speaker, if you read, if you read our standing orders, and I'm saying this with a very heavy heart, because we are elected leaders from 47 counties with special interest senators here, Mr. Speaker. The moment we say is a very, changing leadership is a very small matter. 